Hello everyone, welcome back to lesson 12. In this lesson we are going to solve some more questions at the end of chapter 1 and hopefully we are going to end chapter 1. Okay, here in exercise 44.247 determine whether the statement is true or false. If it is true, justify your answer. If it is false, justify your answer means give the reason why it's true. If it is false, Give an example that shows it is false. Okay. 44. If f of a equal to f of b, f of a is result. f of any number is result. If f of a is equal to f of b, this means if result of a, a is a value that could be anything. Uh, if they are equal, then the values are equal. I don't think so. This is false. For example, let's say f of x is equal to x squared. Okay. Now, I'm going to choose two different values. The two different values I choose are like this. x equal to negative 2, x equal to 2. These two values are different. Okay. But they will have the same f's. They will have the same results. This is the example to show that 44 is false. f of 2 is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. f of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 squared, which is also 4. Now, I have f of 2 is equal to 4. f of negative 2 is also equal to 4. This means f of 2 is equal to f of negative 2. But 2 and negative 2 are not equal. Then question 44 is false, and this is the example. Negative 2 not equal to 2, while f of negative 2 is equal to f of 2. So this is something that is not the same as this. OK. 45, a vertical line can intersect a graph of a function at most once. If we have a graph, to check if it's a function or not, we do a vertical straight line. If the line crossed once, then we say the graph is function. If the line crossed twice, then we say the graph is not function. Then this one itself is the definition of vertical line test. So 45 is correct. If f of negative x is equal to f of x, okay, for sure it has something to do with even and odd. For all x in the domain of f, then the graph of f is symmetric with respect to y-axis, of course. This is the definition of even function or symmetric with respect to y-axis when f of negative x is equal to fx. So this is true. We don't need to give example for the correct ones, only justify. 47. If f is a function, then f of ax is equal to afx. No. Let's give it an example. I can use the same example, fx equal to x squared. But I'm going to use a different example. Let's say fx is equal to... 2x minus 1. Now, f of ax, this a could be any number. Now I want to find f of 4x. f of 4x is equal to 2 times 4x minus 1. 2 times 4x is 8x minus 1. Okay. Now if I multiply f by 4, since I put 4x here, I want to find 4fx. 4fx means 4 times 2x minus 1. 4 times 2x minus 1 is 8x minus 4. Then this and this are not equal. What the function says, it says they are equal, which they are not equal. Then this makes 47 wrong and this is the example that when you replace 
x with any number times x, like 2x, 3x, the result will not be like the same number multiplied by the entire fx. This is the anti example. This question is a very good question. Think about it. Write the function fx equal to absolute value x plus absolute value x minus 2 without the absolute value notation. Okay. Absolute value is a function that makes negative positive. An absolute value is not the only function that can do that. Absolute value of x is a function that makes negative results positive. Then to write, let's say, negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Absolute value makes negative positive. To write another function instead of this without absolute value notation, we should use piecewise function. Okay. Then we say absolute value of x, let's erase this. Absolute value of x is equal to x if the x is greater than or equal to 0. For any value that is more than 0, that is positive, the value and the absolute value are the same. Another part, we can say negative x if x is less than 0. This means for the negative values, we add another extra negative. So negative cancels, negative makes the result positive. If I have, again, absolute value of negative 2, the result is 2. Now, if I have this function, let's name it f of x. f of negative 2, to use piecewise functions, we do this. This x meets this condition. This number is less than 0. That means we are going to use this part for it. It's going to be negative, negative 2. Makes the result positive. So 2 is the same as 2. This function is doing the same job as absolute value. So they are equal. Since they are equal, I can write this in place of absolute value of x anytime I need. Now let's go back to the booklet. Then instead of absolute value x, I can write x negative x. It's x when the number inside the absolute value is positive, more than 0. And it's negative x is the, if the number inside the absolute value is negative. We give it another extra negative, so negative cancels negative. Result will be always positive, just like the normal absolute value function. For the other part, absolute value x minus 2 x minus 2 inside absolute value will have the same result as x minus 2 without absolute value if the x is greater than 2. It means we try to avoid negative results. If we put any number that is either 2 or more than 2, then when we subtract it by 2, the result will be positive. Then if the absolute value is there or if it's removed, the result is the same, it's positive. But for the negative, we should give it another extra negative, so the negative cancels the negative of the result, then the final, final result will be positive, just like a normal absolute value function. Now I have these two pieces, but what I have here, it's plus between them. Then I should plus them. Adding two piecewise functions is not an easy process. In piecewise functions, these boundaries uh, this are super important. Based on these, we can add the terms together. Okay? Now, here I have, if we represent on a number line, I have numbers that are more than zero. I have numbers that are more than two. And this one is closed. This one is also closed. And I have numbers that are less than 0. I have numbers that are less than 2. 
Actually, this is splitting the number line into three regions. I have one region here, one region here, and another region out here. So I write the three regions I have. I have x less than 0. I have x from 0 until 2. I have x more than 2. Now, based on these regions, from each piecewise function I have, one piece goes into the addition. Now this is extra. This is 0. OK. If I say x less than 0, for the first absolute value, for the first piecewise function, x less than 0 is the negative x. So the upper function, we're going to write negative x. For the lower function, this piecewise function, when x is less than 0, it's going to be this. When x is less than 0 means x is less than 2 as well. Then the negative x minus 2 goes there. It's plus between the two functions, so I should plus the two pieces I have. This negative x minus 2, if I multiply the negative by inside, it will be negative x plus 2. Then I add them. Negative x plus negative x, uh, negative times negative is positive 2. Negative negative is minus, so negative x minus x plus 2 is negative 2x plus 2. So for x less than 0, I got this result. Now when x is from 0 until 2, from 0 until 2 means x is more than 0. Then in this absolute value, in this piecewise, this part has the x more than 0 means it's going to be x. So right here, x. Plus, when x is more than 0 and less than 2, for this part, again, we use this one. x is more than 2. Here, x is not more than 2, so we again use this part. Negative x minus 2. Add them. <coughs> it's going to be x minus x plus 2. x minus x is 0. Only the plus 2 is remaining. For the last part, x less than, uh, x more than 2. x is more than 2. X is more than 2 for this piecewise. We use this part because this X could be more than 2. But this X cannot be more than 2 at all. Then we write the X. In this piecewise, X more than 2, we're going to use this piece, X minus 2. Now add them. X plus X, 2X, minus 2. Now I have these three results. I can write this as one piecewise function that has three branches, one, two, three. And for each part, I know the conditions. Either x is less than or equal to 0, either x is from 0 until 2, or either x is more than 2. So finally, this belongs to the first part that has x less than or equal to 0. Two when x is between 0 and 2, right here. And finally, 2x minus 2, if x is greater than 2. OK? After this, study guide revision 1. By now, you're supposed to be able to solve all of these questions you see. This is the study guide revision 1. In your book, I really suggest, I really recommend uh, to go and solve each single question in the study guide revision and in the test preparation part. This is the end of this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to see the rest of the book. Don't forget to comment below every question you have, so I'm going to answer you as I have time. Thank you so much. از بو فوتوکوپی و پراوگا لخزمتی قطابیانی خوشویز دایا بو اوی لورزی نوی خویندن من دو نبن اما همو پیداویستی کانی قطاب خانه من بو بردست کردون با برسری کوالیتی و باشترین مواد لای اما همو زور ملزمه یک با کوالیتی چی برزود زوانتری شواز دست دکوید 
هر وها همو پیداویست کانی قطاب خانه به هر زانتری نرغ دست دکوید لفوتوکوپی لاس چاب کردنی کتابو بزنس کارتو وصل با کمترین ماو زانترین شوا هر وها چاب کردنی فلکسو لزگو تابلو چاب کردنی نوسین لسر کوپو تیشرت با برسترین کوالیتی گاندن من هیا بو همو شارو شاروش کانی کردستان بو دست کوتنی امبر همانه سردن ممکن با منو نشانا هولیر دو سایدی بحر کی کون برانبر آماده جیاری نه حکومی گروپی لاس با فوتوکوپی فراغا Thank you.